Hello everyone. My name is Ben Suro, and I'm the proud principal of Dwight Morrow High School and the Academies at Englewood program. It is truly a pleasure to be able to speak to the class of 2020, my first graduating class as a principal. I'm both blessed and humbled to be given the privilege to provide this graduation speech for such an exceptional class. Class of 2020, what a year we had together. It was my first year as a principal and your last year as a Dwight Morrill student. We both had so much to look forward to this year. Excitement filled my heart and mind. Anticipation did as well. And I'm sure it filled your heart and mind too. I was so excited to get started, to work with my amazing administrative team and passionate staff. So excited to make a difference, to make my mark here at school. You were also excited to get started with what was sure to be a wonderful senior year. Excited to celebrate with your friends and families, the culmination of a 12 year journey. You were so excited to make a difference to leave your mark on our amazing school. Without question, we were ready and expecting great things for the 2019-2020 school year. And you know what? Our excitement, our eagerness, our passion drove us to make amazing things happen when we were here together on campus. You organized a climate change walkout that led to your voices being heard both locally and nationally. Your dedication to self-care and a community propelled our school to be recognized throughout the state and helped us navigate last November when we decided enough was enough and our senior class established what it meant to be selfless, leaders, empathetic, caring, and a true Maroon Raider. Your persistence, your voice, and your innovation led to a super successful dance and magnificent all-around event that led to rave reviews by our neighboring schools and local businesses. We had sports teams that excelled, individual athletes that defied odds, despite adversity, personal loss, and outside noise. All of this capped by an unforgettable and storybook run to the state wrestling championship. We had a beautiful and captivating musical that only had one showing, but wow, was that showing exceptional, moving, and unforgettable. We had an outstanding, memorable, and profound Black History Month celebration that means so much more to us during this challenging time and hopefully provides transformation for our country and the world over. So many of our clubs and initiatives were recognized for their exceptional work, both in our school, in our Dwight Morrow community, and across the state, with students giving powerful talks and everything of themselves to make impacts that counted. The list of achievements successes and triumphs goes on and on. And the foundation to all of these accomplishments is our incredible 2020 senior class. You have built up our school. You have made it remarkable in many regards. And I cannot thank you enough for your fearless and relentless pursuit of academic and personal excellence. Dwight Morrow High School is a school that is on the rise. And its rise is based on those in our schools and communities who believe in more, who believe in transformation and having no excuses, who commit to nothing but the best, who believe what Biggie said, that the sky is the limit. Martin Luther King once stated, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. 
class of 2020, you have moved our school and our community forward. This graduation speech for the class of 2020 would not be Principal Cyril's speech without some old head wisdom. When you reflect in the days to come, in the years to come, about tonight, about this culmination, about this celebration of you, you will undoubtedly also come to reflect upon the state of our nation, the state of our world, as it grapples with the new realities and outcomes of the COVID-19 pandemic and the census killing of George Floyd. Your memory will unquestionably tie 2020 to both triumph and uncertainty. I truly hope that when you contemplate the uncertainty that we have collectively faced over the last few months, the times that we missed out on, the opportunities we missed to do something or say something, it pushes you to rise above and erase the uncertainty with passion, perseverance, and the desire to be a person who serves others, someone who expects more from themselves, expects more from the world that we live in. Yes, you may have missed your sports season, your last debate, your prom, your weekend down the shore with your friends, your opportunity to close out your high school career the way you had always hoped for. Things have been tough, in dark times for many of us. But it is often in the darkest skies that we see the brightest stars. Things have been tough, but pressure yields diamonds. Missing out on these special moments will only make the ones awaiting so much more sweeter, so much more special, more meaningful. You are a brilliant star, a diamond in the sky, and your light will undoubtedly shine bright for others to marvel at, for others to follow when they navigate their uncertain world. Your triumph is resounding, unquestioned, and absolutely remarkable. Our world is a better place because of you, and our futures are brighter because you are a star. I started off this speech with saying how proud I am of all of you, of my first graduating class. I will always remember you. We shared quite a year, a remarkable one. I look forward to seeing many more remarkable years from the 2020 Dwight Morrow High School senior class and sharing with our community and our world something we have never seen, a graduating class that will never be denied. Your parents, guardians, family, friends, teachers, staff, administration, and communities give you all of our love and hopes for an amazing future. Be well, take care, and don't be afraid to break some eggs. Once a Raider, always a Raider.
Ready, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight on the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Good evening. I want to thank the faculty and the administration for allowing the student council to speak in this virtual ceremony. It has been a long time since the student council president has been allowed to address the graduates. I want to give a special shout out to Caleb Kim, my fellow co-president who yielded his opportunity to speak during this ceremony. Friends, I am filled with both great joy and disappointment to speak before you today. I am excited and enthralled for the diverse and enchanting future ahead of us but I am disappointed that we close this chapter of our lives called high school on our phones and computers. This, I know, is not what we expected our graduation to be like. But my fellow graduates of class of 2020, we are very special in that way. All of our lives have not been as we expected. Many of us were born in the aftermath of 9-11. No one expected that. When we entered high school, our district swept local newspaper headlines, our administration and guidance counselors were changed, and we walked into sophomore year with a totally different schedule than we were told. We are familiar with uncertainty. And now, at the closing of this turbulent chapter, our world is on pause with COVID-19. No one expected this. Senior year is the climax, the highlight of this chapter called high school, yet the pages have stopped. Many of us are confused, upset, frustrated, and anxious. But friends, I am not worried. I believe in each one of us to remain strong and fight with resilience. Cliche, I know. But I say that genuinely because we know uncertainty. We lived through it and made it out. As I look forward to the chapter ahead of us, I am reminded of our freshman year. Many of us back then were confused, upset, frustrated, and anxious, just as we are now. While uncertainty and blank pages in a book are baffling and scary, it gives us room to be leaders, to be the author of our own story. As many of us head out to become future leaders, I want to share a lesson I learned because a lesson learned is a lesson worth sharing. Over the last four years, the Student Council has seen immense growth. Not only did we break fundraising records and hold a first winter formal in the gym with out-of-district guests, but we made tremendous strides to become the voice of the student body. We now have a well-established relationship with the administration, and we propose to have two student representatives sit on the Englewood Board of Education, something the board finally approved last month. Throughout this process of growth and on-campus activism, I realized that leadership and activism is only made possible by empathy and understanding. During my sophomore year, I was angry and frustrated that the adults in power did not care about us, the students. I remember going to my first board meeting just to yell and complain at their lack of communication and care. I thought I was a hero. Looking back, that achieved little to nothing. And frankly, I was wrong. I was wrong to assume that the board members didn't care. I was wrong to think that my yelling would help them understand the students' frustration and pain. Later on, I learned that the natural human instinct when under attack or stress is to put our guards up, 
to argue back, to deflect criticism, our brain naturally initiates a fight or flight response. This, in the world of leadership and activism, is counterproductive and self-defeating. I saw this firsthand. The board became defensive and unwilling to listen to myself and the student boys. We could not make progress until our guards were down and we were willing to listen to one another. For our community and nation to move forward, we need the ability to have productive conversation with empathy and an open mind. Friends, after this day, we move on to fill out the blank pages of our lives. Despite the uncertainty, I have full confidence that our class, the class of 2020, will remain strong and be resilient to become the authors of our own lives and leaders of tomorrow. As we march on in the world, I ask that each of us remember to listen more than we speak. Atticus Finch, my favorite fictional character from To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, once said, you never really understand someone until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. I ask that we strive for a world of understanding and empathy. If we witness ignorance, let us not shun and ignore the people for their ignorance, but help them understand and see what they have failed to see before. Growth takes pain, it's uncomfortable, but let us be comfortable being uncomfortable and grow. Let us not tear each other down, but build each other up. Let us not antagonize and divide, but empathize and unify. Thank you all for your time and congratulations to class of 2020 and their parents. May God bless you. Congratulations, class of 2020 of White Mar Academies in England. It's been quite a memorable year. You have now spent three years at our school, and this year, your final year, is perhaps the most profound and impactful in the rest of your lives. Who would have thought that we would have closed for a time of a pandemic? But more importantly, over the last several weeks, something more has happened. So I stand before you as 17 or 18 year olds who will truly change our world. You have the power to make a difference. You are the next generation. Don't stand for racism. Don't stand for discrimination. Stand for honesty, trust, and caring. And that's what your goal should be. Academics is great, but it combined with those three pillars of our society are what makes a difference. So I implore you today on your graduation day, make the difference. You have the power. You have the voice. Change the world. Make us proud here. Congratulations, class of 2020 of White Marl High School Academies in England. Thank you. Englewood Mayor Michael Wilds congratulating everybody on this great milestone, your graduation from Dwight Mara High School. What a wonderful tribute. What historic times that we're living through. Everyone assembled today watching this video, your families, your teachers, the school administrators, and of course you as students own a piece of your accomplishments that we honor here today. While deprived of an evening of recognition and celebration, every one of you is now empowered with a great education that will serve as a strong foundation for you in life. You will enter from high school as a graduate into the real world. You will be treated as an adult in the community wherever you go, and this comes with both privilege and responsibility. I ask all of you new high school graduates to look at the community gathered here, those that are proud of you. I ask you to continue to make us proud, those sustained excellence in academics, productivity, your careers, and of pillars of society. And that's what I'm addressing today, you students, you graduates as pillars of society. As a mayor, I work with many public officials from council representatives to senators and governors. And I know I can speak with all of them and on behalf of all of them today, when I say there's no greater good than the education of your life than serving others. You're all tremendous assets and your community can use your hearts, your minds, and yes, your hands as well. This summer and beyond, I urge you to volunteer time and give service to the city. There are many individuals who can benefit from your profound change and contribution. As a volunteer, you can help a struggling neighbor or a child learn to read. An elderly veteran receive a, high, a hot meal or a park become even cleaner because of something you did with your hands. You may give up just a few hours of your time to be a contributing member of society, but you will find yourself strengthened 
when you come home at night and you look in the mirror because you did something impactful for society. The lessons you learned for the last four years will stand you well. Life is, in fact, about lessons learned. And the greatest lesson we've ever heard was from an educator himself, the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who believed that our great democracy needed to live up to itself by putting individuals first and helping the greater society. He was a man who lived and, yes, sadly, eventually died for his belief in service to others. Dr. King was quoted once in saying, life's most persistent and urgent question is what you're doing for others. I leave you with Dr. King's critical questions. Your community needs you. Be part of your education to use towards bettering our community. The rewards are infinite and everyone will be touched, not just yourself, but those around you. I know that I'm speaking confidently to each of you, not only as business people, doctors, lawyers, future elected officials, and even perhaps a future president. I know that each of you are achieving whatever it is that you put to your mind. Just remember to make sure that your accomplishments also contribute to something greater than yourself. Congratulations to all of you. In these historic times, it's very difficult for us to have to go through Zooms and videos, but know that we love and respect you. And as we in the city council and my office believe, we wish you lots of love, happiness, and great success.
Good evening, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Kravitz, Principal Suro, Administration, Faculty, Parents, and Class of 2020. It is a great honor to be giving this speech for the Class of 2020. Almost four years ago, I remember leaving the middle school early, unable to attend the graduation. It was a little weird heading into a new and bigger building with a lot more people. Some of you might have felt the same way, especially if you were new to the district. High school can be intimidating for a lot of us, but it is also a place for growth. A lot of us expected high school to be just like the middle school, while some of us were thinking how stressful it was going to be. It is basically just fitting in because once you do fit in, you already know what was expected. I remember having the freshman experience trip, which was a great way for the academies and Dwight Mall students to get to know each other. As I climbed my way up the ranks from underclassmen to upperclassmen, I saw how really talented my classmates were getting. Whether it was a sport or subject in school, everyone started having goals to accomplish as high school went on. Not only that, you showed your dedication to the school by helping out with fundraisers, blood donations, car washes, assembly, diversity day, and many more. All of you have helped out to make the high school experience better and you should acknowledge it. It was really nice to see the athletes and musicians to perform each year because they just get better and better at what they were doing. Your vast talents range from the performing arts to athletics to working hard to various fields of the academic study. We have been given really good opportunities in a safe and happy environment and that is the reason why I believe that we can overcome any obstacle or we will just be wasting our own potential. None of these things would have happened if it wasn't for the foundation that our families, principal, teachers, and staff had set for us. That's why we should all go out, go out of our way to thank them. I would like to give all my thanks to my parents for always having my back and supporting me, not just in my high school career, but for my entire academic career. I would, I would also want to thank God for helping me overcome the obstacles I encountered throughout my high school career. I want to thank the Zone, Ms. Keslin, and my guidance counselor, Ms. Malone, for helping me get to the college I aimed for, which I thought was going to be tough. I thank my friends for supporting me and making the high school experience much better. I also want to thank all the teachers in the school for working their hardest to, pro to provide knowledge and support to us students. I know it's, hard, it's a hard time for us, but even shooting them an email and expressing how you feel about them will make their day. I'm sure a lot of you have goals for your future. Over the next few years, you may end up at a college or trade school. Some of you may have already begun working full time or even have started a family. No matter what your dream is for the future and how hard it is, you can get there with the dedication, determination, and focus that you have learned at high school and always maintain that same energy. Always rem remember where you came from and always remember where you started from. Congratulations, class of 2020. when you are. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, Administration, teachers, parents, and students of Dwight Mora High School and the academies at Englewood. Before I proceed, on the behalf of the graduating class, I would like to thank Superintendent Kravitz, Principal Suro, Ms. Rothman, and Ms. Brown for giving the senior class an opportunity we thought we would miss. Their hard work makes it possible for the class of 2020 to enjoy this graduation. As a class, we've been through many hardships, such as pulling all-nighters because of assignments we thought were not due the next day, managing time between that exciting basketball game or homework, or struggling with personal issues. But in the past four years, we have had help from the faculty, staff, peers, and our devoted families. The memories of receiving help from these extraordinary individuals shape the core of who we are today. This graduation is an example of how those individuals are a blessing to us. This evening is as much about us as those remarkable teachers, parents, staff, siblings, and friends who got us here today. So let me say the simplest yet most powerful words. Thank you. Thank you for believing in our potential. We will never forget. As a class, we've grown from wide-eyed middle school graduates 
to respected leaders that the underclassmen hopefully now look up to. While this year has been tumultuous, we still need to remember who we are. Although this might have been the year to be captain of a sports team or the president of your favorite club, all hope is not lost. High school is a small, small part of our existence and ultimately it does completely define who we are. What I admire about each and every member of the class of 2020 is that I know we will continue to be responsible young adults in this time of uncertainty. Remember, life is about discovering who we are, discovering our value. We must never stop striving to become better than we are because we have all shown we are ready for the challenges that life may put in our path to success. This year alone, we have proven we cannot be broken and our hope lives on. As our class is one of diverse individuals, our past will unquestionably look very different. Some of us will be continuing our education at a college or university. Some of us will be entering the workforce directly. Some of us will be entering the United States military and others will be pursuing an entirely different path. And the point, it's okay to pursue your path. Just remember, life is about the journey as well as the destination. Never become so engrossed in how to achieve your goals that you forget what those goals really mean to the true character of who you are. We are Maroon Raiders. We metaphorically attack life and aggressively strive for greatness. Although we are done here, there is still so much more living to do. Enjoy the ride, my friends. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2020. To the class of 2020, my name is Charles Cobb, and I currently serve as council president and councilman at large for the city of Englewood. It is an honor for me to have the opportunity to address you on your graduation day. First, I would like to thank Superintendent Robert Kravitz, Principal Benjamin Sura, and Class Advisor Grace Brown, Fran Gioso, and the Board of Education members for this opportunity. As a former student, I have walked across that beautiful campus many times. I have sat in the same classrooms, gymnasium, and cafeteria as you. So we have shared some of the same spaces. At this time, you probably have many thoughts going through your mind, and that's normal. But let's take a moment to focus on the present. Normally, you would be walking across campus with your friend and classmates reflecting on the final days of your senior year and possibly discussing what school you will be attending or activities that you will be participating in during this upcoming fall. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the final months of your senior year. Instead of sitting in the classroom doing schoolwork, now you're doing your work from home via the computer. So this changes the way you have communicated with your classmates, your teachers, and administrators. It impacted the prom, your, your commencement ceremony is taking place in an untraditional format. So what did you do? You stayed focused on your goal of graduation. Now you're faced with another impactful event, the social unrest due to the murder of George Floyd, which has galvanized the public locally, nationally, and internationally. These two events will forever be linked to the year that you have graduated from high school, 2020. As I speak to you, someone in the class of 2020 may work on a vaccine that may help protect us from getting these life-threatening viruses, or someone could become a senator, a congressperson, or a council person, working on policies that ensure equality for all. In spite of these events, you have managed to keep your eyes on the prize of graduating from high school. 2020 has long been associated with eyesight and clearly you have not let anything in this world blur your vision of making your graduation day become a reality. For that, you 
should be proud of yourself for having the fortitude, discipline, and the courage to continue to work hard during these unprecedented times. This is something that should make you and your family very proud of this achievement. You have proven that you are prepared for your next challenge in life. So in closing, I will tell you that I would never have thought that one day I would be a counselor or that I would be addressing a high school graduating class. Speaking with you has truly been an honor. So wherever your journey takes you, make the most of it and enjoy the ride. Embrace the, your challenges and learn from your disappointments, but more importantly, keep pushing forward towards your goals. You are the future leaders and we are counting on you to guide us into the future. So start being active in your community by registering to vote and vote and encourage people to fill out the census. I wish you nothing but luck and continued success in the future. Congratulations, class of 2020. Well earned. Welcome to the Alumni Club, and thank you for the opportunity to speaking with you today. Hello and greetings to the class of 2020 at Dwight Morrow Academy's Inglewood High School. Uh, this is Joy Ann Reed from MSNBC's AM Joy. And I wanna first of all, congratulate you uh, on achieving this incredible milestone. Uh, graduating from high school is the beginning of the beginning. It's the beginning of your life. Um, going off to college, deciding what your career is gonna be, deciding who you are gonna be. This is the start of all of that. And I know that you're having this graduation virtually due to the situation that we have right now with COVID uh, and with all the challenges that we have in this country. Uh, but I want you to not think about this graduation, this virtual event that you're having um, as something of a, a defective way of entering into your future. There's actually so much opportunity right now, and you are the digital generation, the generation of the future, the generation that can embrace the future. And so in a way, your being digital graduates really just makes the point that you are ready for the future. And I don't want you to also feel like um, because of your youth, because you are so young, having your graduation this way, having the world be this way, having tens of thousands of people being in the streets right now, marching, the agony that we're going through right now. Don't make that let you feel that the future is not bright because the reality is you are the generation that's gonna make it bright. And your youth actually is part of your superpower. I wanna tell you guys a story. So John Lewis, who I'm sure you've all heard of, uh, the Congressman from Georgia, he started his career as an activist when he was not that much older than you were. Um, when he was a member of what they call the Big Six, the six speakers uh, at the March on Washington in 1963, he was only 23 years old. He was a young man. He was a guy just out of college. He was not that much older, again, than you. And he had already decided that he was going to change the world for the better, that he was going to be the change that he was seeking. And I'll tell you just a little bit uh, about his history. So John Lewis's family uh, is actually from Alabama, not from Georgia. Uh, and his family, his parents were sharecroppers. And so he grew up in an America in which Black Americans not only were looked upon as less than full citizens, but were treated not that much better than they had been as enslaved people. Um, when Black people emerged out of slavery, they emerged into a world that still didn't accept us, that still didn't accept the idea that Black people were fully people and were inheritors of the same civilization and of the same benefits of citizenship as white Americans. And John Lewis understood that, as did Dr. King, who eventually became one of his leaders and his mentors, who was also not that much older than he was uh, when King started his career. Uh, in civil rights, he was only 22. And so these were all very, very young men uh, and women who were deciding that they were gonna change the world. And so John Lewis's family comes out of Troy, Alabama. That is where he was originally from. 
Uh, and he winds up heading the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which was all young people. Uh, Ella Baker, who was their mentor, was only 35 years old. And the people who made up SNCC, as it was called, were all in their late teens to early 20s. And they had decided they were going to take it upon themselves to change their parents and their grandparents' realities. And so John Lewis becomes uh, one of the top coordinators for SNCC out when he's 23 years old. He speaks at the March on Washington. And you know, when you think about the March on Washington, lots of people think about the I Have a Dream speech. But the other speakers, including John Lewis, many of whom were younger than King, they came there not as a way to, you know, promote just nonviolence and civil rights, which of course they were for, but also to scorn the present system, including the Democratic president, John F. Kennedy. They weren't there to praise Kennedy. They were there to critique Kennedy and say, you were not doing enough. You're not doing nearly enough for the young people of this country who want change now. And John Lewis's speech was originally so hardcore that Dr. King was sent by the labor leaders who had put together the money to fund the, the March on Washington. And they said, you got to tone this guy's speech down because his speech was so angry. His speech was so hardcore that they were afraid that if he gave the speech as it was written and as he had submitted to the leaders of the March on Washington, that they lose all their funding, like the NAACP, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, everybody would lose their funding because basically white funders were still backing what they were doing. And they're like, all the funding is going to go if he gives the speech. And so King actually had to go and tamp down John Lewis. That's how radical John Lewis was. I mean, he's like real sweet right now, but don't think of him as a Muppet. Don't think of King as one either. Because all of these men who uh, now are sort of portrayed as sort of greeting card versions of themselves, they were angry for very good reason. Just like the people who are in the streets right now marching for George Floyd are angry for good reason. Those who are marching in Louisville, Kentucky about Breonna Taylor have a good reason to be angry. People have a good reason to be angry about what happened to Ahmaud Arbery, what happened in Atlanta, where a man running away from police is shot twice in the back. We're seeing the kind of anger that is a repeated anger. It's a repeated anger for Black people in this country who understand that we've never been able to achieve full citizenship and that we won't be until we are treated exactly the same way that white citizens are treated, until we're policed the same way that white people are policed, until we receive the same full respect from this society that white citizens do. And the thing that's very different about this era than John Lewis's era is that those streets in John Lewis's era in the 1960s, the march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which shouldn't be named that because that dude was a Klansman, Edmund Pettus. We need to change some names of some things, not just Confederate statues. But the, the, the anger that they felt and those marches were mostly Black people. Most of the people you saw being fire hosed by police, having dogs sick on them by police were mostly Black. Now, of course, SNCC was very careful to bring white students down from colleges in the North to say march with us because they knew that if those Southern racists com uh, committed violence against those white young people, it would look a whole lot different on TV than just them fire hosing Black people because they understood there was a different respect for white life, for what mattered. White life mattered. Black life did not seem to matter. And so they needed to have a sprinkling of white people in the mix in order to get the whole country, the country as a whole, the media, to look upon this abuse as really wrong and make change. And that's why so many white young people came down and joined those marches. Well, today, a lot of the marches that we're seeing on the street are mostly white. They're mostly white people. There are towns where there are no black people, where it's only white people who are marching. They're getting the fire hoses. They're taking a knee. They're confronting the police. And I think now that you have a more fulsome sense among white Americans that this change needs to happen now, because if black citizens are endangered by what amounts to a police state, well, nobody's safe. If we're not safe, you're not safe because eventually abusive behavior will bleed onto the majority that thinks of itself as being in the in crowd. No one's in the in crowd. If, if there is not a sense of, of justice in this system, a sense of justice in this country, then no one is safe. And eventually everyone suffers. And I think now, as opposed to in the 1960s, there's a much greater recognition of that.
So you all are graduating into a world in which there is much more unanimity across racial lines, that indigenous people are not being treated as full citizens, that black people, that brown people, that the people who work in meatpacking plants, that the people who have to do the hourly jobs where they can't stay home, where they can't work from their nice comfortable offices, where they have to go in and face COVID-19, the people who are losing their jobs, the people who can't pay their rent, that these people deserve full respect and they're not all black. And that all of us have to pull together and work together to make this a more just society. Because if we don't, it's not going to be a fair society or a society where any of us can succeed. So you're graduating into a world in which more people than ever in the history of this un United States agree with that. They agree that we need fundamental change. They agree that we need to have greater fairness in this society or we can't have a society. And so you all are the emerging leaders of that new culture, that new understanding, that new agreement. And that makes you all the most powerful generation in history. So this virtual graduation is just a sign that you all are ready for the future because the future is digital. The future is virtual. The future is people who understand how to command this technology, to make this technology work for them, to work this technology for the greater good. And that's you. That's your generation. So I want you all to understand that you are John Lewis in the 1960s, only with a digital edge. You all have the opportunity and you have the knowledge and you have the preparation Listen, if y'all can go on TikTok and make funny videos, you can really pretty much do anything. So I just want you to know that I believe in you fully. Your parents are so proud of you. They're not less proud of you because they're proud of more or they're being proud of you on digital. Your teachers are so proud of you. The leaders of your school are so proud of you because you guys are already building the future. So I want you guys to go forth. I want you to keep on building. I want you guys to stay proud and stay loud because the best way to change a country is to change it from the youth up. And you all are the people that we are counting on to make this a better place, to make this a better country, to make this a better world. And we know that you can do it. You know why? Because you're already doing it. I want to thank you guys for listening to me. I want to once again wish you a happy graduation, a congratulations. And I know that y'all are going to be great. Hello. On behalf of the Board of Education and as president, I would like to say congratulations to the class of 2020. We are very proud of you for accomplishing this goal and reaching this milestone in your life, despite the challenges we have faced for the last few months. Job well done in a very new and unexpected end of the year. As you go out into the world, as adults, know that we are here for you. Know that we feel the pain of you not being able to celebrate the way we normally do as, or as tradition would have it. But I would like to know, you to know that as alumni, you will be more than special as all alumni are, but we would like to encourage you to keep in close contact with us because as these last few months has taught us, we need each other. We need to work together as a community. We need to work together um, in our, for our nation. We need to stand together to get anything done. And on that note, as you grow and move into your next phase of your life, know that you matter to us know that we are here for you and we would like to continue to see you grow. We know that you are prepared for whatever comes your way and you have proven that by accomplishing and finishing school and being able to celebrate on this day. Congratulations, we're very proud of you. We wish you all the best and we look forward to hearing great things about you. As the principal of Dwight Morrow High School and the academies at Englewood, after careful scrutiny of the requirements submitted to my office, I have found that you have completed the requirements for graduation. I therefore certify that these candidates for graduation have fully satisfied the requirements 
prescribed by the Department of Education of the State of New Jersey. By the authority vested in me as President of the Board of Education of the Englewood Public School District, and having been presented and duly certified by the principal that you have completed the basic requirements prescribed by the Department of Education for the state of New Jersey, I now confirm you high school graduates of the White Mora High School Academies at Inglewood for the school year 2019-2020. Congratulations. We are very proud of you, and we wish you all the best for your future. Hamza Abdali. Andres Acosta Aguirre. Alcides Aguilar. Michael Aguilar. Kenya Acreage. Guys, I like to say thank you to all the teachers who actually cared about me and supported me on my journey, and I hope everybody has a wonderful year. Mia Alfred. I would like to thank my family and all of my friends who supported me throughout this journey. Class of 2020, we did it. <laughs> Sammy El Shameh. Kenzie Alvarado Barrett. Priyani Alvarenga. Faith Anderson. I say thank you to all my friends, my family, and especially God for getting me through these four years. Dwight Mara and Academies, I'm gonna miss you guys so much. Congratulations, everyone. Stefan Anderson Tashana Anderson Zabria Anderson Philip Anarine I just want to say thank you to all my family, friends, and my tour teachers, only my tour ones, who helped me become who I am today, and I'm glad to move on from the class of 2020 to the class of 2024. Brianna Babulal. Thank you to my family and friends for getting me through these four crazy years. I finally did it. Seong Kyung Bae. Amira Baksh Shahir Baksh Joel Balikchaolu Alyssa Baptiste Congratulations class of 2020 Javon Barnes Victor Bassi Jasid Bader Anayeli Benoit Martinez Patricia Benson Kenneth Bermudez Diane Bernard Jeffrey Blanco Madison Brooks Brian Bullock Nicholas Bustos Darius Butcher 
graduates of the class of 2020, we have experienced a year like no other, but we made it. Best of luck in the future. Grandpa, I made it. Alex Caicedo. Yo, man, this has been my journey, man. I can't believe it's over. I like to thank my family, my friends, everybody that pushed me, everybody that made me go hard in school. Thank Reynaldo Camarena. Shamar Canal. Santiago Cano Garcia. Wendy Casimiro. Antonio Castro. Miguel Castro. What's up, guys? It's Miguel. I want to thank all my teachers and coaches for a great four years. And to my class of 2020, we've been through it all. And that just goes to show how strong we are together. Class of 2020, stand up. Karen Catano. Michael Ceballos. Mark Chang. Tanasia Chapman. I just want to thank everybody and the entire class of 2020 for this four-year emotional roller coaster. It's been fun, guys. Sasha Cheek. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, family and friends, and you're looking at a future nurse practitioner. Ashley Choi. Lauren Choi. Yoon J. Chung. Dwayne Clark. Janisa Cockburn. Scripture Collier. Shanavia Cooper. Enrico Cortesano. No matter the memory, whether it was good or bad, thank you for every single one of them. Santiago Cuartas Marquez. I have to thank my parents and my aunt, who have always been supporting me all the time. And thanks to them, I am here. Angelica Cereal. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you for an amazing four years, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished. Thank you for the memories I'll never forget, and good luck. I know you'll all do great things. Nijay Davey. Isaiah Dolphy. Dylan Dow. These past four years have been a long ride and I'm so happy it's finally coming to an end. I would like to thank my parents, my friends, and my teachers for all the love and support. Congrats, Class of 2020. German Echeverry. Srivatsan Idea Chandran. Erika Espinal. Saba Faragala. Hello to my fellow graduates, faculty, and families. Thank you all for making these past four years very magical and special to us. Congratulations, class of 2020. Genevieve Fond. Melissa Fearin. It's been a long four years, but we finally made it. So thank you to everyone for all the memories, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for all of us. Jennifer Ferreira. 
جیسل فیگروا حماد فنی لوردس فرمپانگ آندریس فولهنسیو کیرتی گانسن Hi guys, I'm so proud of everyone who's made it up to this moment. I know it wasn't always easy, but we did it. So congratulations and I wish you all the best of luck in the future. Joshua Garcia Savannah George Destiny Gillespie Mangrum Anthony Gofredo Anaya Gonzalez Marquise Gordon Marvin Guerra Annie Guo Alexis Gutierrez David Gutierrez Jason Ha Alexis Hall Amanda Halliday Angelina Han Jiyoon Han Juyoon Han Kaya Hawkins Vanessa Hernandez Though we're not able to celebrate together, I just want to say congratulations to all of my classmates. I am very happy and proud of you guys. I wish nothing but success for you guys. Mauricio Hernandez Pineda Kyle Heron Jacob Hickey Dominique Hicks Green Christopher Hinton Hello graduate class of 2020. I just want to say thank you for voting most artistic. That means the world to me. I've been proud to be your raider these past 4 years. Good luck to everyone and stay safe. Christian Harato Shamel Hughes give a special thanks to my mother for all the hassle through senior year and I would also like to thank Dr. Walker and Mr. Summer Kelvin Hunt Caleb Hunt Jiyoon Huang Irene Jacob We did it. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2020. Amazing adventures await all of us. So here's to celebrating the rest of our lives. Selena Jacob. Congratulations to the class of 2020. In the face of adversity, we still persevered. We made it, guys. Rachel Jun. Ashley Jimenez. Thank you high school for the ups and downs. This is for my mom who came with nothing and gave me everything and to God as well. Jonathan Jones. Timothy Jung. Dahyun Kang. 
Hamza Khan. Ashley Kim. Caleb Kim. Congrats to the class of 2020. Thank you to all my family, friends, and teachers who helped me make it through these past four years. Eric Kim. My name is Eric Kim. Now everyone has been telling me that 10 seconds is too short for anything other than a few thank yous or goodbyes. But I'm actually here to tell them that they're wrong because I... Hyunsu Kim. Ronan Kim. Natalia Kroll. I just want to say thank you to my friends and family, and I want to thank God, but not only to God, but to Jesus for helping me through these four years. Andrew Lamb. Kwamani Lang. Julio Lantigua. Hey everyone, it's been a great four years. We've learned so much and built many great friendships. I wish you all the very best. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hector Lebron. Andrew Lee. Never expected to be graduating in front of my house, but it's okay. I hope everyone is safe and let's, let's get the party rolling. Dong Hyun Lee Janie Lee Kayla Lee Lauren Lee Octavia Lee Kenneth Lim Julia Lima Congratulations to the senior class. Thank you for all of the memories. I wish you all the best and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Kyle Linares Kevin Loiza Jeremy Lupron Emil Madeira Thank you to my parents for supporting me and everything I do. Albert Mahabi Johanna Mahano Nicholas Marin Santiago Marin. Hi, class of 2020. I just want to tell you guys that we did it, and I want to thank my family, my teachers, my friends that made all this year special. Congratulations. Sierra Martin. Corey Martin. Corey Martin Bird. Vanessa Martinez Diego Maruri Macias Quiero agradecerle a mi familia decir que este logro es para ellos y que los amo Camila Mazzoni Thank you to all the wonderful teachers and classmates who helped me along the way. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Jose Menjivar Orias. Risha Mohan. Congratulations, class of 2020. It has been a long journey, but it was filled with many memorable moments that I will always cherish. 
Danielle Monsion Jerez, Aaliyah Montgomery, Adam Morales, Shania Morales. Rafael Moran Gabriela Mungia Congratulations class of 2020 let new adventures begin Musa Myrtle Anais Nina Kevin Noriega Teddy Nueva Espana Well, those four years went by pretty fast. Thanks to my parents, my friends, and everyone else that got us here. On to the next one. Guys, we made it. Alicia Nunnally Sua O Damian Orlowski Mariana Ortiz Maria Ospina Stephen Pack Sean Park Veronica Parker Thank you to my friends, my family, and those who were kind to me. I wanted to wish the class of 2020 good luck, and I hope you accomplish all your goals in life. Akash Patel Rebecca Paul Elizabeth Peña Espino Chantal Peña Martinez Jamel Perez Godzi Philip Bovin Phillips Tyler Phillips Javier Pumarejo Mariana Quinchia Heather Ann Rabanis Rebecca Reyes. To the class of 2020, I can't imagine sharing this experience with anyone else. Let's be the generation that fights against the injustice that remains in society today. Congrats, everyone. Rashaya Richardson. I would like to thank my family and my friends. Here's to the class of 2020, and here's to new beginnings. I wish you all the best. Travis Rickenbacker Alexis Robinson Congratulations guys, I wish you so much happiness and success for the years to come. Alicia Rodriguez Thank you to my family, friends, and teachers who helped me reach this accomplishment. And congratulations to my friends and fellow classmates who are also graduating with me today. Christian Rodriguez Liz Rodriguez Lisandra Rompich John Rosario 
Hey everyone, we have the opportunity to make a change in the world, be that change. And for all my friends and family who've supported me, I love you guys. Thank you. Andrew Rosario Reynoso. Daimon Russell. Robert Rizzotti. Diana Saiteros Flores. Gianna Scarpa. Julia Schwartz. Shans Set. Thank you to my teachers who helped me throughout high school. And to my classmates and friends, I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Nelufar Shatterson. Shania Sinclair. Thank all my teachers. I want to big up my family. I want to big up my friend them. And the stuff for Uno. Montage Singh Tistan Su Rudy Small Kayla Smith Lenasha Smith Trayvon Smith Zion Smith Katarzyna Soliwoda Madeline Sorbinelli Congratulations, class of 2020. If we can overcome this, we can overcome anything. Great things are coming. Orlando Sosa. Claudia Spahu. Congratulations, class of 2020. I rushed my cap like I rushed the rest of my high school work. Elise Steely. Emily Suero. Class of 2020, even though this year didn't end the way we expected it to, it'll be a year we'll never forget. Congratulations to my fellow seniors and good luck on your future endeavors. Amber Sun. Thank you to the class of 2020 teachers and faculty for the best memories during these four years. Sakti Sundaram. Pooja Taylor. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thanks for all the memories, and I love you all. Joshua Taiwo. Jeffrey Taylor. Charlie Tejada. Taija Thomas. Isaiah Threat Caesar Tlahuel Kelly Torres Thank you high school for all of the unforgettable experiences and all the ups and downs. Despite the circumstances in 2020, I'm still very happy to say I'm graduating. Natalie Trujillo Deki Tsotsong Nazire Turner Brian Vazquez D. 
DeAndre Vaughn. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's helped me get to where I'm at. I want to thank my teachers, my friends, especially my family. Congrats, everybody. Daniela Vera. Matthew Victoria. High school is filled with learning experiences and growth. And as a student athlete, baseball and school challenged me, but I made it to the end of this chapter. Rodrigo Vidal Dahajua Walker Madison Walker Congratulations class of 2020. Although our year has been very unexpected, I know our futures will be bright. Jerry Wang Naishe Washington Leanne Welch Tyra Welch Nadia Williams Anthony Wu Thank you to my family and friends for staying by my side throughout high school. Sarah Yang. April Yu. David Yaum. Daniela Zafra. Jefferson Zapeta Franco Alice Zhao Congratulations! Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the one who will decide where to go. You look up and down the street. Look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not-so-good streets. And you may not find any that you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And then things start to happen. Don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. And oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun, and slumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you could sprain both your elbow and shin, do you dare to stay out or do you dare to go in? How much can you see? How much can you win? How much can you lose? And if you go in, should you turn left or right or right and three quarters or maybe not quite or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you'll find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start to race down a long, wiggled road at the breakneck pace. 
and grind on for miles across weirdish, wild space, headed, I fear, for a most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for yes or no, or waiting for your hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for a fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting, perhaps, for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of a guy. Oh, the places you'll go, there is fun to be done. There are points to be scored, there are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be as famous as famous can be, with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win, because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the hackens crack howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. Be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. Remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. Kids, you'll move mountains. So, be your name Buxbum, or Bixby, or Bray, or Mordecai, Ali, Van Allen, or O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is the day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way.